Let's start with cutting boards. My favorite is bamboo. To me, it's probably the safest board because unlike the glass cutting boards, your knife actually goes into the wood. On glass, it slides to the side, which is very dangerous when you're chopping and cutting. For safety issues, when you're cutting on your cutting board, you'll notice that if it's on the counter, it's gonna have a tendency to move around. To stop that from happening, place a dampened paper towel on your counter first before you place your cutting board on so it won't move. This board is like an artist and a palette, you know. You can make it nice and cute. It, you know, when you're working, you know, you want to be organised in your head. So have a bin on your right. Work from left to right unless you're left-handed and you work the other way around. You want something that's around 8 to 10 inches long for a chef knife. And your handle style is either western, which is this, or octagonal, which I much prefer an octagonal. It's got all these nice ridges to keep the knife super steady in your hand, and you got a nice grip. It won't like sort of rotate and slide around. So at the end of the day, up to you, but make sure that you're paying attention to that. That is all you need in your world. In your world, at your level of a great, great home cook, that's all you need. That for 90% of the time. That for 5% of the time. That's a paring knife. You use that just for veggies, taking ends off, topping, tailing, right? And then a, a, a serrated knife for carving bread, you know, slightly more awkward things that need a bit of, like, jack, right? But that's not a, that's not a graceful knife. That's helpful. That's an everyday thing. This. This is everything, okay? You're going to want to start with these two fingers, your thumb and your index finger, and you're going to grab it right here like that, right? Hold this, wrap these three fingers around. To hold the knife, take your index finger and your thumb and pinch both sides at the top of the blade, then bring your other three fingers back onto the handle of the blade. This will give you a sturdy and firm hold over the blade. Obviously, you can change your hand and move it around in whatever's comfortable. This is what's comfortable for me. You'll see, and watch me cut in all my videos that anytime I hold the knife, I hold it like this. It almost feels like an extension of yourself. And that's gonna be the same no matter what knife you use. Okay, now we have a petty, you got a tiny little, little baby knife. You can still hold it the same way, and it's gonna do the same thing. Regardless of how quick I go, it makes no difference to what I do. <laughs> the reason I don't cut myself is because at all times, forever, my fingers are nowhere near the blade, right? The technique is gonna be your hand that holds the food you're cutting. You don't wanna keep your hand in this position or this way. You wanna make sure you do what we call the claw grip. Your fingers are at the very top holding the item you're cutting. All right, so we need to talk about the claw technique. What you need to do is you need to form your hand into a claw shape like this with your middle finger in the forefront. Some people like to use their index. I personally think it's safer with your middle finger. And you're just gonna glide along that clawed middle finger. That blade is never coming up above it and the blade is going straight up and down. You will never cut yourself if you maintain that form. All this turned out. You look at how my fingers are working. Can you all see what I'm doing? Notice the big problem is, right, and I've learned through cutting myself, is sometimes you forget, you do it safely, but you forget your thumb, and your thumb pops out, oh. and, it gets, and it gets crunched off, right? And we can sew it back, right? So all, always keep the thumb at the back, and that won't happen. Always keep the fingers in, right? Now, the idea as well, see this? My thumb is secure here, right? And I'm bringing my fingers back like that, but my fingers are in, yeah? Now, the speed in which I pull this back, if I go like that, and I, and, I, and I pull my fingers back quickly, you get chunky bits, yeah? But if you want fine bits, you pull it back slowly. You see, using this technique, I'm able to maintain a pretty comfortable speed. And I mean, typically, I get cut and not even look, and I know that I'm safe because I'm using this technique. Now, well, I wouldn't really recommend that. You get the point. Easiest, 
simplest way for an amateur is always going to be the rocking cut. Where you're sort of rocking your knife from the tip all the way to the rear. From the tip all the way to the rear. And you just kind of practice that. That's the best way to start. So, to be safe for now, fingers are still in, thumbs still out of the way. I'm rocking. Right? And I'm not rocking up here, because then you will take your fingers off. Gentle, gentle. And that is, that's going to go through nice things with skin. No problem. Right? Nice. This is rock chopping. Right? I'm going to rock chop this mushroom because it's a little bit soft. Okay? And chilli. This would be rock chopping as well. You add as much chilli as you want. When I'm in my kitchen, look. How you doing? You alright? I can be going super quick. I can look at every one of you in the eye. I can look at every single one of you around the kitchen. Because I know what's going on in my hand. And, and by the way, I didn't take my blade anywhere above this knuckle. It was always within that. No matter if it's high or low, cucumber, courgette or pepper, your hand just goes up with it. Well, I grab. We'll bring the knife, the tip is staying down, and we'll make some really thin slices of the onion. Now the next one is just the straight up and down. You're literally picking the knife up and going straight back down, up and straight back down. This is more for like speed. If you want to go really, really fast, you'll see me doing this. and just look after one bit instead of... Okay? Now the next one is the sliding chop, where you can't really tell in this shop, but I'm basically sliding the knife forward while also going straight up and down at the same time. This works really well for slicing things super thin. I can make you as good as me on cross chopping in 45 seconds. Just listen to me. Hand at the end, right? And then it's that. Easy. Very, very easy. Right? It's safe. Your fingers are never, ever in the way. It's safe. It's the first thing I taught my kid at eight years old, right? Also, it's not just a knife and chopping. Can you see me doing that? It's like a plasterer with his, with his cement. Scent of it. No, if it starts to spray over here. Drag, where you're literally just dragging the knife through stuff. This is fun and all, and like you can sometimes get thin slices with it, but honestly, I wouldn't recommend it for anything other than meat just because it's very easy to cut yourself. Use it at your own risk, alright? least is that your knife needs to be sharp. It needs more precise cutting and it's safer. And as a little hint, we'll have a new knife sharpening video coming up. Right. See at the end, it's a bit vulnerable. Yeah? Moving around. When, when things feel vulnerable, it means you've got to cut yourself. Right? So that's a bit more funny, right? So if it's round, it's awful. What can I do? Just take the end off, like that, then it's flat. 